Welcome to the Legally Speaking Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Hanna. Welcome back to part two of our Thriving in Law mini-series, where we aim to raise awareness around mental health and diversity and inclusion in law. This week, I'm joined by Imogen Hamblin. Imogen identifies as a cisgender lesbian woman. She is an employment lawyer at Thrive Law and specializes in discrimination claims. Imogen has recently joined the LGBT plus committee of the Law Society, building on her previous work experience and work around raising diversity in the community. Imogen also works part-time as a lecturer at the University of Law and Leeds Beckett University. So a very big welcome, Imogen. Thank you. So yeah, you've done your research there, Rob. Thank you very much for having me. No, it's an absolute pleasure. And it's always good to meet a fellow podcast host as, as, as well. Today, we're talking all about all about you, of course. So the first question is, why did you decide to join Thrive Law? Yeah, OK. So I actually know Jodie Hill from Bar School. We actually go back um, a long way and studied together in Leeds. And then just coincidentally, both of us ended up going into employment law. So I had kept in touch with Jodie through social media. She's very prevalent online. So I I like to um, keep an eye on what she was doing. And I could see that she'd started a business. And the idea was to establish a different kind of law firm. So I wanted to find out a bit more about that. So I met up with Jodie over lunch. And essentially, we both shared our experiences of the legal profession to date. And... (laughs) I just want to say that whilst there are a lot of good people who work within the profession, don't get me wrong, there are also a lot of the very archaic views, particularly in management and governance. And unfortunately, it just happened that both Jodie and I had had similar experiences of the profession really neglecting people's mental health. And certainly there were some practices which exacerbated that. So, for example, the expectation to work long hours the fact that targets didn't really respect working time regulations, annual leave entitlement was very difficult to take or you had to work in excess to take annual leave. And even most surprisingly, there's no minimum wage legislation to protect trainees. So Jodie and I really, we, we kind of shared values on you know, what, what it would be like to have a healthy working environment. And I came to realise that actually there is absolutely no reason why you can't be a lawyer and also have a mental health problem or be part of a minority group or a working mother. But these things were not really um, well perceived within the profession to date. So Jodie and I, we basically, we had a mission to do things differently. And she's enabled me to be a massive part of Thrive, where we've been championing diversity and inclusion within the profession. So to be frank, Rob, I, f- I feel like we are the disruptors of the legal profession. Well, so that's it's great. great. I love disruptors because I, I always say with Casey <laughs> Partners, we're the disruptors of the legal recruitment sphere. So uh, fantastic. Yeah, fellow to meet uh, good disruptors. So why are you so passionate about um, LGBT inclusion? Yeah. So, well, as, as you said in the introduction, Rob, I am a member of the LGBT um, plus community. So therefore, clearly it's an issue which is close to my heart. But in particular, I want to ensure that there's no barrier to members of the community being part of the legal profession. So it made sense as part of Thrive for me to champion this protected characteristic. And I'm sure Jodie's explained we have other people within Thrive who champion other characteristics. So you also mentioned as well that I've recently joined the LGBT plus committee of the Law Society. And really our central mission there is to try and break down barriers and be visible for other people who share the protected characteristic within the profession. So that role has also enabled me to further my knowledge and understanding of some of the biggest issues within the profession for members of um, of my community. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks so much for sharing that. And how does this interrelate, I guess, to mental health? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, it's an obvious one for me because people who don't feel that they fit into traditional categories of gender uh, and sexuality they may experience difficulties that affect their health and well-being. And it's, it, you know, clearly not being accepted or feeling different or less than other people, that is going to have a severe impact upon mental health. Not only can it sometimes feel very lonely and unsafe to be part of a minority community, but worst of all, there are still some outside prejudices. And, and that really can mean that members of, of the LGBT community are sometimes not accepting of themselves. 
This can lead, unfortunately, to manifestations of issues ranging from low self-esteem, low self-worth, um, and particularly other self-harming behaviours. So it can be quite severe. And I don't think it's unfair to say that people identifying as members of the LGBT plus community are at greater risk of mental health conditions. Um, and just at this point, I would like to raise my concerns about members um, of the transgender community in particular, because recently it came to my attention that they are at greater risk of um, violence to the person. And so disproportionately, they are affected by violent crimes than other members of the community. And I, I just find that absolutely shocking. Um, but it is, you know, the sad reality. And as a result, I think the LGBT community are likely to experience the range of mental health problems such as depression, suicidal thoughts, self-harm, as I've mentioned, and, and substance abuse. So really, Rob, I think the two are inextricably linked. Absolutely. And some really important points um, well made there that need to be to be addressed. And what else can be done to improve mental well-being around LGBT inclusion? Yeah, I'm glad you've asked me this because I think, you know, we can, all, we can all talk about subjects, can't we? But fundamentally, what's most important is, well, can we give practical advice to people to improve inclusion? There is clearly a growing acceptance of the LGBT community in the UK. And obviously, we have made some great progress. Not long ago, you know, it was actually a criminal offence to be in a same-sex relationship. And um, so the decriminalizing of that and also uh, accepting legalizing same sex marriage, you know, that's clearly now acceptable. But there's still a clear need for greater evidence on how impactful policies and procedures can be effectively implemented to combat the inequalities. So I think the most important thing is to, first of all, to break down stigma surrounding prejudice. Um, to be able to engage members of other communities in non-aggressive, and I want to be clear about that because some conversations can, can be very heated, but it's so important to have calm, non-aggressive conversations to try and understand why prejudice still exists and where it's coming from. And I am a strong and firm believer, Rob, that only through education and open discussion can we really enact any kind of positive change. So the reason why I'm championing this um, characteristic within Thrive and the wider profession is not only to ensure that members of the community are visible. So it's important for me to be visible, to be a role model to others, which is key to then engaging others and making people feel safe and that there's somebody that can be approached to create a safe environment where, where all are welcome, really. But when I say welcome, I mean legitimately as a reflection and an expression of who they are, who they really are and not in the sense that they're welcome, provided they conform with societal norms. That, and that's very, very important. A profession which can demonstrate true diversity is a healthy and sustainable one. So I've got a number of things that employers can do to improve LGBT inclusion. So firstly, opening up conversations, carrying out you know, confidential diversity studies to see who is working within your organization. Because if 10% of the population are members of the LGBT plus community? Is that really reflected within your organization? The second thing that I would do is have an LGBT champion, you know, someone like myself who sits on a wider diversity and inclusion committee. And that enables, as I've just said to you, Rob, to create that visibility in a safe space um, for people to raise issues if they arise. Thirdly, um, ensure that your internal policies, so lots of people have internal policies on diversity and inclusion, but are they actually being followed? Are they actually being enacted? And if you're not attracting people from other communities, are you actually really demonstrating the principles of equal opportunity? Or is it you know, just there to say, yes, we've got a policy? So is there a problem in recruitment if you haven't got, you know, 10%? I'm, I'm not saying, you know, blanket 10%, but you know what I'm saying, if, if people aren't visible or, or you haven't got the reflection within your organisation, is there a problem with the recruitment or even retention? Fourthly, I'd make sure that your management board is reflective of the people working within the firm. And this is a big challenge, but one that we're slowly seeing, you know, women and people of um, the BAME community are now accessing management boards, which are great. And uh, fifth, I would start celebrating diversity if you haven't already. So there are a number of events throughout the calendar year which you can get behind. Um, so we've recently had Trans Awareness Week and we'll have the LGBT History Month and also there's Pride events. So, you know, make sure you get behind those events to show your support. 
Uh, and then finally, I'd just like to say, so work that we've been doing at Thrive, we've recently implemented a policy whereby people are invited. You may have noticed this, Rob, but people are invited to now put their pronouns uh, on their LinkedIn pages and on their email signatures in order to create dialogue about gender identity. And that's to um, make it in a much more positive and accepting way. So that there's absolutely loads of things that you can do. That's, you know, that's just to name just a few. But I am more than happy to be contacted to discuss anything within this podcast further. Uh, obviously, it's something that I'm interested in. So happy to be contacted. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for all of those insights, Imogen. Really, really helpful. And I'm sure we'll, we'll go a long way in, in helping raise awareness. But from all of us on the Legally Speaking podcast, thanks so much once again. But for now, over and out. Thank you very much, Robert. Take care then. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Legally Speaking podcast. If you enjoyed the show and want to help support us, remember to leave us a rating and review on Apple iTunes. You can also support the show and gain exclusive benefits, bonus content and much more by signing up to our Patreon page, which is www.patreon.com forward slash Legally Speaking podcast. Thanks for listening.